Hey, it's Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Between the Bellows, a show that combines large format photography and short documentary stories. So last week, Cinestill announced the newest addition to their film lineup, 400D in large format 4x5. I had a chance to shoot a few sheets on a recent trip, and I was really happy with how my landscape shots turned out. The company has come a long way starting with 35mm, moving up to 120, and now into the large format space. And it made me curious about the company's origin story and who was behind it. So in this episode, I sit down with the founders of Cinestill, Brandon and Brian Wright, better known as the Brothers Wright, and learn about their journey. So let's dive right in. Hey, I'm Brandon Wright. I'm one of the co-founders of Cinestill, and this is my brother. I'm Brian Wright, and we're here at Cinestill HQ in Hollywood. Well, here at HQ now, we basically do everything under this roof. We do everything from clerical work, bookkeeping, to running the website, programming, graphic design, um, marketing, customer support is here, all the way to R&D and, you know, uh, quality assurance tests on all of our batches to, you know, a YouTube studio. There's only um, about 15 of us here. I guess the only thing we don't do here is the actual manufacturing of the film, which we do in Rochester as frequently as we can and as needed. After being there for just a few minutes, it was clear to me that everyone here loves film and geeks out over cameras. I was really impressed to find out that for such a well-known company, the entire operation is run by a small and lean group of people who wear all different hats. Uh, so we have a full lab here for processing film, for our own personal film, but also every day we're doing quality assurance tests for the film we manufacture and um, testing any film as it ages to make sure that expiration is good and it's stored correctly. Um, but then also R&D experiments with all kinds of stuff up, up in here with different uh, chemicals and uh, film tests, pretty much anything, but this is our playground. Hey, Teddy. This is my uh, assistant. Uh, we moved to LA in the late 20 aughts. Um, and to do music and wedding photography here in Los Angeles. Um, during that time, it was big digital revolution time. Uh, people were screaming from the rooftops, film is dead. We didn't buy into that. We loved film, started on film, and wanted to keep shooting film. A lot of films had been discontinued. There weren't any tungsten balanced films. Mm -hmm. um, and all of those wedding receptions are bare bulb string lights, candle lights, very, very, very warm light. So when you would shoot something like Fuji 400H or Porta 400, uh, the fastest, uh, 800Z was still available, I think. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. But the fastest color films available, it would turn out extremely orange. Um, you couldn't, if someone was wearing a blue shirt or there was like a blue flower on the table, it would just look neutral. Yeah, and you could put a filter on the lens to filter out that yeah, to make it more cool. Um, but then you lose two stops of light, and now you're shooting like a 200 speed film. 100 yeah, speed light or 100 speed. Um, and that doesn't really work with just handheld cameras. And when we were shooting 16 millimeter and Super 8, we were getting the footage back from either documentary, behind the scenes, live concerts, um, music videos, or wedding videos. The stuff in tungsten light just was beautiful compared to what we're getting on the daylight balanced films for still photography. So we naturally wanted to shoot more 35, not just in motion, but in still format. And so we decided to get a 250 exposure bulk back. It happens to be right here on this camera and lug this around and take it to the motion picture lab and have them process it. That was our solution. We were able to shoot motion picture film inside of our Nikon F3 at weddings, music photography, and get full color in tungsten light. So that began the, the brainchild, the concept of Cinestill film. Taking motion picture film, converting it so it's safe for processing in standard C41 chemicals. So it turns out that conversion process changes the film's contrast curve and color palette, giving Cinestill that unique look that became so popular. And if all this C41 chemistry talk sounds confusing, that is totally normal. And you don't have to worry about any of it if you take all of your film to a lab. But if you're thinking about processing film at home though, 
then it's important to know which chemistry you need for the type of film that you shot. So the reason people shouldn't shoot motion picture film in any old camera and just drop it off at the lab is because the film itself is made for a different process, a different chemical and mechanical process that includes one of many steps, which is remjet removal. The remjet on motion picture film is very useful for cinematographers and for the ECN2 motion picture workflow. It's not so helpful for still photography. It's a, it's a backing layer that protects the film from scratches at the base plate, um, prevents some halation, um, and prevents static from forming on the film when going at high speed through a camera. But if you drop that film off at a normal photo lab and they didn't know about it, um, Man, that same remjet would destroy their chemicals in their machine. So that halation effect is a very signature thing for Cinestill. It's not on every image, but if you have something extremely hard backlit or a dark against a really bright point that's like three to four stops above middle gray, you're gonna get a little bit of like a red glow, which a lot of people like, and that's been in photography since the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, halation is something that was on all the early black and white stocks and early color stocks. Um, when recreating reality exactly as you see it, which is the goal of the science of photography, it's not desirable, so they found ways to eliminate it. Our film has it. People love it. Some people hate it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's a different option for different people. We thought it would be a professional medium for people shooting, uh, you know, low light photography. Turns out tons of hobbyists and other professionals were shooting it in daylight. Um, and they produced results on this material that we had kind of developed um, that had a unique look and using it in different ways than we had used it and produced these results that were amazing. And that was so much more satisfying than trying to keep something to myself and be a gatekeeper, which we've never believed in doing. After getting to know the brothers and their story, it was time to set up for the portrait. I'm excited for this one since I'm shooting on the new Cinestill 400D in 4x5, so I'm using my Linhoff Master Technica Classic, and I'm shooting with a 135mm Schneider f3.5 lens. The Cinestill office has this wonderful huge window with diffused natural light. And even though they have a full studio with backdrops, I personally wanted to show some of the environment and depth to the space. If you notice the Christmas tree, it's because I actually shot this video back in December of 2023. Anytime I have a group of people, I try to have each person doing something a little bit different. So it's always a bit of trial and error for me, seeing what feels comfortable for your subjects and what you think looks good in the frame. Once everything looked good to me, it was time to shoot. I shot this with the lens wide open at f3.5, and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So I just wanna thank everyone at Cinestill for giving me their time and sharing their story with me. I think it's great that there are companies out there in 2024 keeping film alive and providing options to photographers. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Share with a friend who loves stories, photography. It will really help support and build the channel. I really love making these episodes and I wanna keep doing more of them. So I will see you on the next episode of Between the Bellows. Thanks.